Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun cozy mystery tier ranking. So these are all cozy mysteries that I have read at least one book from in the last like year and a half or so. So mostly 2021 and uh, part of this year, a little bit of last year, or the year before that, I'm sorry. And I thought it'd be fun to put these all into one of those tier makers that are so popular and like kind of, I love watching these videos personally. And to kind of like put them into categories to really see what comes out on top, what comes out on bottom, like have a really good visual element with it. So we're going to see. I haven't done one of these before, so I'm hoping the screen record works, but let's go ahead and hop into the first one. Okay, so our first one here is going to be the Library Lover series from Jen McKinley, which if you've been on my channel before, you know is one of my all-time favorite series. It's just amazing. It's about a librarian, and it's just... Uh, Jen McKinley is one of my favorite authors for the Cozy Mysteries. She flushes out her characters so beautifully. You can like just feel the Bay Area and like really feel like you're there when you're reading her books. The mysteries are always really well done. Highly recommend. It's definitely in my most amazing like top five, which I'll link a video I did on my top five mystery Cozy Mystery series for beginners up here if you want to hear more about the series. But one of my favorites for sure. Um, the next one is the Haunted Library series. This one is this particular cover is Buried in the Stacks, and it's by Allison Brooke, and I really liked the first one. I think I gave it five stars. The second was a four-star read, and this third one here I just finished a while ago for my January reads, and it was just okay. Um, so I'm going to put it in the good section, because it's, it's... Like, I definitely think I'm going to read the next one, so it's above this, and I really did like the first two especially, but this third book really was kind of flat for me, so I'm hoping it was just a, like, one of the books just happened to not be my thing. Like, I'm hoping the rest of the series will, like, go uphill from there, because um, the first two I really did like. The third one was just kind of okay, so I'm hoping it's not, like, a downward trend, basically, but I'm going to put it in good for now. This next one, I, I DNF'd it hard. I did not finish this. It was so... I couldn't, get, I couldn't get myself through it. This is the, um, this particular book is a catered costume party, and this is part of the Mystery with Recipe series, and I could not, could not get through it. Um, it's just, it was so bad. I, I, I um, the, the, the two main characters are sisters, and they run a catering business together, which sounds right up my alley. I love, like, family relationships in these cozy mysteries, like, where families are working together in a business or something like that, or where there's, like, close ties, and this book, they were just at each other's neck constantly, like, you couldn't even understand how they could possibly function as, like, a business pair, like, I don't know how they could run a business together, because it's like they hated each other so much, and there was no, like, specific reason or, like, something that happened in the book that I could figure out that seemed like it would make them hate each other, I couldn't stand it, it wasn't very good. Uh, next one is Garland of Bones. This, that is a Sarah Booth Delaney mystery series, and I didn't finish this particular one. I don't. Th I don't think I did. Pretty sure I didn't. I didn't end up really falling in love with the mystery. I was really like uninterested in it, but I liked the characters a lot. And this book is really late in the series, so I'm kind of wondering maybe if I go back, maybe some of the original mysteries in the series are a little bit better. Um, maybe the series just kind of like fell off a little bit at the end. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe if I go back because I like the character so much, and I really like the writing style, like it was very engaging and easy to read and enjoyable, but I just didn't like this mystery at all. So I'm hoping maybe if I give another book in the series another try, like I'll end up liking it. So let me know if you have a favorite from that series. This one's a, a repeat, I somehow got another Library Lovers one in here, so I'm going to put that at the bottom because I already did that. This next one is A Slice to Die For, it's a Pizza Lovers Mystery by Chris Cavender, which I have up here, and it's most amazing one of my all-time favorites. One of the ones that got me into Cozy Mysteries, it will make you very hungry. Um, the main character's name is Eleanor Swift and she owns A Slice of Delight, which is a pizza shop, and it's just so delightful. And her and her sister Maddie work there, and it's a really well done example of two sisters who are very different, but work together really well, support each other, love each other, despite their big differences in personality, and I just love the series. It's The mysteries are great. I love it. It's so good. Um, the next one is A Spell for Trouble. I'm going to put this in the good category because it's definitely a solid one. I've only read one from this series. And this is part of the Enchanted Bay series and I really liked it. I'm not a huge paranormal mystery fan, um, but this is one of the few that I have read that I did really like. I felt like the magic wasn't used as like 
you know, a deus ex machina to just solve all the problems of the mystery, but like it had some fun elements. I liked hearing about the family like history with the magic and stuff, so I would recommend this. I did think it was good. I want to read the second one in the series. My library doesn't have it though, so I might have to find... So I'm probably going to have to find my own way to get it. This next one is called Arsenic and Old Puzzles, and this is part of a Puzzle Lady mystery. It's by Parnell Hall, and I read the Arsenic and Old Puzzles, which is really far into the series, and I... I really loved the mystery. I really liked the writing style. So you're wondering why I put it and would consider reading another is because the main character was so unlikable. <laughs> I like hated her cuts. Her name is Cora and she's this very like spicy, spunky like older lady and which normally would be right up my alley but she was outright rude to like everybody. Like I mean disrespectful to law enforcement. Completely rude to like her friends, her family, her like niece, everyone. Like she was so rude. So I don't know if it was just like this book but I loved the concept for the book otherwise like they had puzzles you could solve in there. Like I actually did solve some of them too, the Sudoku puzzles. So I really loved like everything else about the series except for the main character and she was so detestable. Like I understand having flawed characters and I think that's really good but this character I hate it. So I'm I don't know. I want to read an earlier one in the series to see if I would like it, so I'm putting it in the wood considering another because everything else about it was really good. The mystery was great, the setting was great, everything else was great, I just couldn't stand the character. So I kind of want to try it again, I don't know. Next one is As Gouda as Dead. I should have... I should have DNF'd this. Um, it's gonna go on the DNF'd hard because I really really disliked it and will not read another one. Um, this is part of the cheese shop mysteries and I, I, I just couldn't. Um, the main character was just really kind of like stuck up. She didn't really work at being a sleuth at all. Like she, she, and she also had this like arrogant attitude about, well I'm the only one who can solve this mystery, but then she wouldn't actually do anything to try to solve the mystery. Like everything just kind of landed in her lap and I just didn't like this book. It was, it was just so dramatic even for like a murder mystery it was just over the top I didn't like the characters I, I couldn't get through it so um, I barely finished it and I don't know why I finished it honestly so it's in the DNF not gonna not even gonna consider reading another one really book the next one is the Bake Shop Mysteries by Ellie Alexander which I started reading last December and it's really good I'm gonna put it I don't know if it's in the most amazing or the love of these I think it's in the most amazing Pretty sure. Um, so I've on. I just finished book three in the series. I already have book four, ready to check. Um, ready to start reading soon. I'll probably start it actually today or tomorrow, and it's just really great. It's a um, bake shop. Is the you know, the main premise, and our main character Jules runs it with her mother. It, it's called Tort. It's in Ashland, Oregon, and it's just beautiful setting. The character development from book to book and like the arcs for the characters are really good, especially for cozy. Sometimes they kind of just like. The character kind of stays flat or like the same throughout the whole series. This one you can really see the character gro growth each book and I'm only three books in so I think that's incredible. I think the side characters are all fleshed out and interesting. I love it. It's actually yeah it should be in the most amazing. I just haven't read as many of this one as I have from these two but I've read three and they're just top notch so it's going in the most amazing. Next one is another <laughs> repeat whoops. Um, this one is called Crime and Punctuation I'm gonna put it in the DNF'd hard. I didn't actually not finish it. I did finish it, but I just was so unimpressed. This one is called Crime and Punctuation. I can't remember what the series is called. It's like an, a deadly edit series, I think. The main character is a freelance editor, which I thought would be cool because I'm a freelance writer. So I thought I'd have like, you know, kind of like some rapport with her there, a repertoire, like just, you know, be able to really like put myself in her shoes well. But she was just, I mean, she really didn't, seem that interested in the mystery and solving it she just kind of like passively watched it be solved like it I don't know it just it didn't really get me going there was a lot there was very little action in it as well like I really didn't have like that page turning feeling that I want with a mystery so it was it just wasn't for me next one is deadly editions this is the Scottish bookshop series by Paige Selton I have one over here it's one of my favorite series ever it's so good. Paige Shelton, incredible writer. I absolutely love her writing. Her characters in this are fleshed out. It's in Scotland. It's all about books and like rare book related like antiques and like 
things of the sort and there's a lot of really interesting tropes you don't usually see in cozies. I love this series. It's one of my most recommended. If you haven't read it, please go read it. Next one is Death of a Cozy Writer by G.M. Mallet. I'm going to put this in the the good category because I have the second one right now checked out. I'm excited to read it. Each book is like death of a insert like a um, a uh, trope or like genre and then that writer. So it's like de death of the, uh, the next one is like death of a chiclet writer or something. This one's de death of a cozy writer. I did like it. It felt very like Agatha Christie style writing. Uh, the kind of like old school mystery a little bit more very like conversation focused but I really did like it. I think it was done well. I'm excited to read more in the series. I just feel like I need to read a little bit more before giving it like a love or a most amazing. I feel like it definitely could move up though. Next one is Facials are or fa Facials Can Be Fatal. This is by Nancy J. Cohen. This is the Bad Hair Day Mystery Series. Again, this is one of the series that got me into Cozy Mystery, so it's in the most amazing category. I love it. I recommend it. Marla is the main character. It's centered in Florida and she's a hairstylist. It gives her a lot of interesting, unique opportunities. I haven't really seen a hairstylist as a, a main like profession in cozies and I feel like it's a really natural one so I definitely recommend it. It's very good. Next one is Glazed Murder. This is by Jessica Beck and this is a would consider reading another. I read like the first three or so in the series and Jessica Beck is actually Chris Cavender, like a pen name, another pen name for the Chris Cavender writer. Um, but I didn't like this series as much. It, it involves donuts. I love bake shop, like baking mysteries. I really do. But I just, I don't know, I didn't fall in love with the characters as much. I felt like it wasn't as well written. There's like 50 plus books in this series too. I couldn't believe it. There's only like eight or something in the Pizza Lover's Mystery. And I'm like, write more for the pizza. Um, but the, the donut shop murders were pretty good. I just... I needed a little bit more from it, but if I saw one, like I recently did my or val new Valentine's Day cozy mysteries that are coming out, I think that video will be out after this, so hit subscribe so you're, you know, alerted when that comes out. But there's a new donuts mystery series coming out with that one by the same author, and it's like book 55. It sounds really interesting, so I'm kind of like tempted to pick that one up, see if I like it. So I would consider reading another one. I wasn't burned like hard, but I wasn't like an absolute love of mine, I guess. Okay, next one is Needed to Death by Winnie Archer. This is a love for sure. I read the first one in December. I'm waiting on the second and third book to actually arrive to my home soon um, because my library didn't have them, so I had to order them used. But really good book. I really enjoyed the setup. This was an excellent first cozy mystery. Would recommend. Next one is Louisa and the Missing Heiress. I would put this under Love These. There's only like three in the series. The author's probably not going to write more because it's kind of an older series. But the main character is actually a reimagined Louisa May Alcott who wrote Little Woman and a bunch of other classics. And it's a historical fiction cozy and I really did enjoy it. Um, there was only three in the series. There was a, a couple little things I would want improved for it to be my most amazing but I did really love it so like I would be really excited if they came out with more so I would put it in the love category. Next one is definitely an all-time most amazing. It's Reese Bowen's The Royal's Finest series. I love love the series. I have a couple up here. It's so good. Um, it's a historical fiction set in the early 1900s in England with Georgie who is royal but like she's like 35th in line for the throne or something so she doesn't really get the perks of being royal in terms of like money and stuff but she's like expected to live a certain life so she has like to take all these like kind of side jobs and gigs and ends up getting into spying and it's a really amazing series. I recommend reading this from the beginning for sure. Some cozy series you can jump in at any time. This one I would recommend starting from the beginning but it's really good. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Next one is Murder in the First Edition. I would consider reading another um, I believe it's by Lauren Elliott. I've only read one. Um, I wish I liked it more, but the main character, there was like some annoying love triangle that was driving me crazy, and I was like, why am I reading? Like, it's about, it felt like half the book was on this love triangle, and I was like, this is a mystery series. I want to read the mystery. And then the main character, Addie, was kind of obnoxious in this book. Like, she was just hard-headed to a fault, and as someone who is also hard-headed, I'm hard-headed, but, I mean, she made me look like an easygoing person. Um, she was just really annoying in this book, but I did read some reviews saying that this was a particularly like 
was one of the books in the series that they didn't like even though they loved the rest of the series and I've had some of you tell me that you enjoyed other books in the series so I want to read another one basically is what I'm saying. So our next one is called uh, This is Peril at Sumner House. This is a Daphne du Maurier mystery and again like the Louisa May Alcott one this is like a reimagined historical fiction cozy with Daphne du Mar, the author of Rebecca as the main character and it was really well done. It's super good. There's only like two or three books out for it unfortunately. Like please write more. Um, but I really did like it so that's definitely going like a love these category because it was just a really fun enjoyable read because both of those authors are top like tier favorite authors of mine. Next one is Sprinkle with Murder or the Cupcake Bakery Mystery. This is also by my favorite Jen McKinley who wrote the Library Lover series so it's going in the most amazing it's incredible. I love it. I read every book in the series. I think I actually have one or two as well on the way that are used for this because my library had all but like a couple random ones and I, I just need to, I need to know. I need the I need to read every book in the series. So that one definitely amazing. Next one is Stalking Jack the Ripper. This is gonna go in the DNF DNF hard slash not my thing category. Um, this is part of Stalking Jack the Ripper the series. This is the first in the book. It's like a historical fiction young adult mystery. It's a little less cozy. There are some descriptions of cadavers. It's not like extremely graphic but like I wouldn't eat while reading it so it's a little it's like moderately graphic but like it's it's definitely not too bad it is young adult but I thought the premise was really cool for this book however the main character just turned out to be like this very like I'm not like other girls and I you know but then at the same time she'd be like oh I'm really feminine but I'm also smart like but then she'd be putting down other people in her life who were just for being feminine even though they wanted to like dress up and have fun like it was just really annoying and then the the reveal at the end the person who did it it was completely like, I saw it coming, which is fine, you know, often, like, if you, if a writer leaves good clues, like, and I can figure out who did it, that means they maybe did a good job with it, but the, re the reason that this person did it was so absurd, <laughs> in my opinion, and it, it just didn't work. It, it, I couldn't do it. I'm gonna put my link to above to worst books I read in 2021. This was in it. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. Um, next one is the... Uh, Cookie House Mystery Series. This is the second one. I haven't read the second book yet, but I'm really excited. I loved the first one. I think this could definitely be in my most amazing this year once I read more in the series, but for now I'm going to put it in Love These because I've only read one. Uh, it's, it's really good. It's just the first book in the series blew me away because it had so many common cozy mystery tropes, but it delivered really well. So, like, it, it just did everything really well done. The characters were fleshed out, the relationships felt authentic, the mystery was really interesting. I loved it. Next one is the Needlecraft mystery series. Um, this was just good for me. I read two in the series and I liked them, but I didn't love them. Like, I, I, there's, there's at least 20 or something in the series, and I just don't feel, like, super compelled to go read a bunch more. If I found, like, one that really intrigued me, I would pick it up probably, because I did enjoy the two I read, but I'm not, like, feeling like, I don't know, I'm not, like, super interested in reading, like, a ton of them. It just, it was good. It was good, but it wasn't amazing. It wasn't a love of mine. Next one is The Coloring Crook by Krista Davis, which is the coloring um, pen and ink mystery series. This is, I've read two so far. Oh, they're so good. Um, I'm going to put this in the love these category. I think it could be in the most amazing category. There's two more in the series. One's coming out this year and I want to read more. I think it could move up, but it's definitely really good. Really enjoyed it. I have it behind me here. I really enjoyed it. So I would, I'd say I love it. The main character I really love. I love the setting. I love the uniqueness of her sketching and the whole coloring book theme I think is very unique and fun. I'm gonna put in the love. It's it's definitely a love. Similarly, this is to, um, the first book is to, uh, to Helvetica and Back, A Dangerous Type Mystery by Paige Shelton. And this is gonna go in the love these category. I I love the Scottish Bookshop series more by Paige Shelton. Um, there's only three in this series and it looks like she stopped after that so I'm really sad. I'm, I have the second book on the way right now and I'm very excited to read it. But it's sad knowing there's only three in the series in total. But it's a really interesting really interesting career job. She, it's a main character, three generations of family, all working in this like typewriter store that does repairs and sells typewriters and all these things and the, the mystery about it was so 
well developed. I really enjoyed the characters, the family relationships, so I'm putting it in love these. So the next one we have is called Trick or Deceit. This is a celebration, celebration Bay mystery series, and this was just okay for me. Um, I would consider reading another. There were some really annoying tropes in this book that just made it less enjoyable for me. I, thought, I, I remember liking the mystery, but there was just so many annoying tropes that it kind of killed it for me. But like, if I found one I really liked, I would consider it. This next one I it was in the DNF hard slash I did not like category. This is by Leslie Meyer. It's the Lucy Stone mystery series. I know it's an incredibly popular series. I couldn't stand it. Um, this is one of the later books in the series, and it was so political. It was so political. It felt like it was just shoving views down like your throat. Um, and I read cozy mysteries to escape, like, you know, and sometimes the cozy mysteries do cover serious, like, serious issues in society, like, you know, addiction or different things like that. And I think that can be done in a, a really good way. And some of these other books on this list do that. But this, it just felt like they were shoving it down your throat. Like, every page of this book was, like, multiple, like, political issues being shoved down your throat. It felt like a tirade, almost, of the author's personal views on different issues going on at the time that this was published. And then the main characters were so boring, so flat, so uninspired. Like, I just, I had, I didn't care about them at all. Like, I just, I don't know. I, and the sad thing is I thought the idea for the mystery was really cool too, but between like the shoving political views and like how just over the top it was and how boring the characters were, I just, I hated it. I it was really one of the worst books I read last year, unfortunately. And our last two we have, so Up to No Gouda, this is a grilled cheese eatery mystery. This is a new series that just got launched in January. I'm going to put this in the love category. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Now, I'm going to put it in good. I, it was, it was good. Main character was good. I'm excited to see where the series continues, and I think it could, I think it can be moved up in the categories, but it definitely played into a lot of cozy mystery tropes, like a lot of them. Like, I know you're going to have a couple tropes, of course, but like, it, it played very heavily into a huge amount of tropes, but didn't really do anything unique with them, so it was a little bit... Like, it could use a little bit more, I think, but I think once we get out of that first book, I think it's going to be really interesting. So, yeah, I'm excited to see where the series goes. And our last one is the Molly Murphy Mystery Series by Reese Bowen. This is in the love category for me. It's definitely a very good series. The Royal Spinus one is my favorite from her. But Molly Murphy is another historical fiction cozy mystery. It's done in New York in, like, the early 1910s, I want to say. Molly is a Irish immigrant. She's super spunky, fiery. I love her. She breaks a lot of conventions at the time and like sticks up for herself and other women and important issues. So this actually, this book is a good example of one that handles different like political, big serious issue topics well. Like there's stuff about suffragettes and uh, you know people being discriminated at different economic levels and just like kind of there's a lot of important topics covered in this, but it's done well and not in this, like, shoving how the, how it should be fixed, like, down your throat, but, like, showing a nice, like, a good, it shows, like, a good, well-rounded view of the issue. Um, so I really appreciate that. And then her writing is just beautiful. You really feel like you're part of whatever Reese Bowen's writing, so I really love it. It's one of my, it's definitely up there in favorites, but... Like, these are all amazing. The love these, I, I love all of them. I do. They're all really good. <laughs> but the most amazings are, like, I need to, like, I have to keep reading. Um, the love these are, I want to keep reading. The goods are, like, okay, I'm gonna probably read more of these. <laughs> um, I like them. I'm gonna probably read more, but they're not, like, priority reads, if you will. And then this row is, like, okay, I'll read some maybe if one catches my eye maybe and i have like time and the last row is like no this is my final tier chart i hope this video was fun for you guys let me know if you want to see more like tier style videos in the future because i have some ideas for ones so if you enjoyed this let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you disagree with any of my rankings how you would rank some of these series if you've read them and i'll see you guys in my next video bye